Hello and welcome, Exiles. Let's talk the league start for Sentinel. I have been kind of losing my mind trying to figure out what I want to play. Usually, they give us new skills, new balance changes, and I can just YOLO something unknown and be like, hey, if it doesn't work, it's not my fault, or, you know, whatever, I can have fun with it. And since we know nothing's changing, there's a lot more pressure there to be like, well, I probably should figure out something good, something reliable. And so... I went through basically coming up with some ideas. Um, one was an ivory tower guardian RF. That was kind of, eh, it didn't really quite pan out the way I was thinking it would when I was trying to num like narrow down numbers and stuff. Then I had an idea for a necromancer aura stacker, like pseudo aura stacker, which I thought could be pretty cool. But then I was like, eh, that's going to be more of a late game transition thing and then the build i was going to do before that going moving up to this necromancer or stacker build i've had planned out was a self-cast volatile dead build and i did some testing in game and turns out i hate the play style i hate self-casting desecrate just so i can cast vd it feels really weird it feels awkward i don't like it i had a plan for a necromancer wander you can see i was on a kind of a necro kick for a good portion of these like league start plans i was making and that actually was probably decent enough, but then I was like, ah, I don't know if I like Wanders enough to start it. So I, I started looking at other things. Um, one of the things I thought about doing was a, now hear me out, a, a Strength Stack, Pillar of the Cage God, Gladiator, Bone Chatter, which procs Vengeance and Reckoning. So I'd have like three different six link setups and two of them were counterattacks that are getting doubled. I think it would be interesting and could maybe be okay on a lower budget but at the same time i'm like eh, i don't feel comfortable enough with this to go with it because it's just i'm not really that good at making attack based builds i think i do okay at them it's definitely something i want to get better at and i'm like eh, i'm not sure what i'll risk that on a league start and then i had another idea to do a volatile dead spell slinger more of the story is i've gone through a laundry list of potato build ideas more <laughs> more or less and uh i came back to good old Righteous Fire. You never go wrong with Righteous Fire. It's the best skill in the game, everybody. Just You just gotta know that's a fact. And the right choice, the correct choice, the thing you should do if you're gonna play Righteous Fire in a league start, it's Inquisitor. It really is. But because it's the right choice, I can't do it. I, I have this weird thing where I like try to avoid meta stuff. And... It just feels awkward going back to something that's been so done by so many different people. Like, I was on the early adopter stage of RF Inquisitor, but it's become mainstream, and now I don't feel like I can touch it, even though I love it, right? And because of that, I'm looking at the other RF Ascendancies, and I'm doing some calculations, and I'm looking it over, and I'm thinking, Trickster. I like Trickster. I want Trickster to be good. There are things I, I think can work for Trickster, but in the past, I've done Righteous Fire Trickster, and they've they've gone a little bit short of what I would call basically a, a really nice, well-rounded build. There's been a flaw here or a flaw there, and I want to go over those with you and why I think now would be different than the previous times. And so I've made, I've made our Trickster a couple times, ES versions. This was one I did in... Um, I wish I put the league in it. I don't know. This was a couple leagues ago, and then this one was even farther back, and this was a Shadow Stitch Righteous Fire Trickster. And both of these relied on using the shield, the S shield, which makes it so your damage doesn't bypass your ES pool if you're not on low life or not on low mana. It's previously was you you had to be not on low of either, so you had to have this unreserved and that unreserved. And then they buffed it and made it so you only had to be not on low life or not on low mana. So you had more reservation space. It made it more viable of an option to prevent chaos damage from bypassing your energy shield. And this build basically probably was a strict upgrade from this one. It was just def defensively better, I would say. Maybe it's the worst damage, but then this was also before the support gem nerfs, yada, yada, yada. Moral of the story, Trickster RF had one big downside. And that downside was... If you go into a boss fight, your recovery rate that you would have based on killing enemies recently isn't there, and therefore your, your sustain kind of feels like it sucks in a boss fight. I mean, you can get through it. You can kill the boss fairly fast. You can dodge some mechanics or just get hit a few times. You're still decently tanky, but there was this 
mm, this doesn't quite feel really like you want it to feel. When you're playing a Righteous Fire build, you want to sit there, you want to tank stuff, and you want to say, you can suck it, boss, because I'm better than you. And you couldn't quite do this with this. This build did not have enough sustain, even though it had fairly good sustain, it wasn't good enough. So, when I'm going over this, I'm thinking, how can I solve this? And there's some new developments that I've come to realize from playing this game. And one of my new favorite things is the trader in combination with a, I don't even have it socketed in, but a coruscating elixir flask. This is, in my opinion, one of the strongest ways to make a low life energy shield build with the least amount of downside. Because in my opinion, Having to use the Esh's Visage and not being able to reserve half your life pool, those are pretty big downsides in comparison to sacrificing a couple flash slots. I think this is the optimal way to do it from my experience. And so I'm thinking, okay, I can incorporate some of this new tech to do this. I can now achieve low life righteous fire and I can still have a good shield and I can have, um, I can have another 50% reservation on my life pool. That gives us more power. What else can we do that's different? Well, for example, when I made this build, melding of the flesh didn't exist. And part of the problem with this build is it really didn't have the, it didn't have max res really that much of it anyways. And so now with melding of the flesh being a thing, we definitely 100% can get much better sustain in terms of just taking less damage from Righteous Fire, but we can take it even further. And by even further, I want to look at something like Vile Reinvigoration. When I said Trickster feels bad in a boss fight, but amazing in mapping, that's because Trickster has recovery rate if you've killed an enemy recently. So what I was thinking potentially, and I could be wrong about this, whether or not it works, but something like a Writhing Jar in combination with a chess piece with the gain charges per second mod plus trader. I think we could relatively sustain a writhing jar that we could proc whenever we're in a boss fight and we want to hit sustain, we pop a writhing jar and boom, we're getting vile reinvigoration here, 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 and here. And that's 8% regen per second or ES regen per second plus the recovery rate from our trickster. Now, what I don't know is will killing a worm, which basically they instantly die, Will that count as them being affected by damage over time? I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments will know. But that's one of the things I was thinking, okay, we're solving the we don't feel perfectly tanky in a boss fight situation. And also, we're adding in more damage because I believe this is more damage than I had in previous builds in terms of stuff I've spec for. And I have some ideas about cool items we could create to basically take our energy shield even higher. Hint, it might involve a global defense mod. I'd be tempted to try to incorporate this. Now, this build would have to start out as life-based, um, but I just want to talk about the end game goal for where we're going to take the Righteous Fire build because I'm giving you guys a choice or maybe a voting poll. Some, some of you guys can maybe comment below what you would prefer me to do because I actually have a second build in mind, which is a life-based Righteous Fire Elementalist. And again, these are not the setups I'm going to be... If I choose whichever one I go with, what I choose... I'm going to make a fully fleshed out leveling tree, my plan for progression, yada, yada, yada. I'm just talking about the big picture for where I want to take these builds in the end game, where I think they could go. And now specifically, I want to mention this uh, as well is I will be planning to get explosion in both of these builds, I think, in some form of another at the bare minimum legacy of fury. But I would like to do better than that personally in terms of getting even better um, explosions. I'm talking things like the Elementalist Nuke build I made a few leagues back. This build was great for mapping. It had crazy fun clear in terms of just the chain explosions. Now, granted, this was with Legacy Explode mod, but I think we can get close to this even with our current explode options, which would be something like Azanath or an explode chest. Uh, there's options where you can still get pretty good explodes going, but like I was saying is these builds, although they were good, there's a reason why I think, oh, Inquisitor's the go-to option, and that's because they had weaknesses. These builds, for example, the, my Elementalist builds, had a similar weakness to Trickster, which was they had bad sustain. Moral of the story is, part of the reason Inquisitor is so freaking good 
it's right as pious pat inquisitor basically just comes with giga sustain and then you can fix the other things and the sustain is one of the most important things for the righteous fire build to feel good so moral of the story is i'm thinking how can i fix sustain on elementalist if i want to do a life based version and i could also consider doing an energy shield based version i would have to plan that out a decent amount differently than i have here but Sustain for Elementalist, I'm thinking, okay, I could lean harder into Legion Primordial. I could potentially go into Elemancer. I could potentially go into the um, Golem nodes here. I haven't exactly perfected this tree. I just wanted to get these thoughts out here for what I'm thinking. And then there were other things I was leaning towards is stuff like, oh, I didn't have Melody of the Flesh before. I can incorporate that and I get 90 max fire res. That's going to mitigate a large portion of the fire damage, which means our net regen per second is much higher. Other things I considered was, well, part of the problem with Elementalist is you generally have kind of a lower life pool. And that's usually because your tree is a lot more intelligence based and you don't get as much flat strength. So you're, you're not getting much life from your flat strength, whereas you're getting a decent amount of maybe flat life or you're getting a decent amount of in stuff, which could help with e if you're doing an ES based. But if we're doing life based, well, if we do something like a Mask of the Stitch Demon, all of a sudden that int becomes better life pool. I don't know if this is quite worth it. Sacrificing a rare helmet is a very big deal for a Righteous Fire build. So I'm not 100% sold on that, but doing that in combination with a gain life is ES or potentially a Doriani Jewel for another gain 15% is ES could give us this huge ES pool, which gives us life regen per second. Granted, it will make our Righteous Fire um, hit us harder, but it will also make Righteous Fire hit enemies harder because the Righteous Fire damage is based on a portion of our life and our ES pool, and then we'd be getting regen based on our ES pool that we're not sustaining because of how mass the Stitch Demon works. There's some interesting uh, mechanics there that I potentially wanted to look into. So, moral of the story is, and another thing I want to say about this build is, Jewel sockets, in my opinion, are king when it comes to Righteous Fire. You get so much power from a jewel socket because you get a Fractured Life Jewel, you spam Scourge Fossils, all of a sudden you get Fractured Life, you get Fire Dot Multi, Burning Damage, and Percent Fire Damage. These stats are massive. Every single one of these jewels you're equipping to your Righteous Fire build is just huge power spikes. And on this character, there is a ton of jewel sockets to take advantage of the way I have it mapped out, which I think could end up making this... A actually fairly high HP and high damage Righteous Fire character. Part of the things that I love about Elemental so much is it's just so heavy damage wise. Shaper of Storms, Mastermind Discord, Hard Destruction, these are all giga damage nodes. And I'm not 100% decided on this. I could go Elemancer instead of this. I could go for Shaper of Flames potentially, but I think we can get Ignite Chance, and it, at which point we don't really need this to get explodes, really chain, chain exploding, etc. Um, moral of the story is. I have some conflicting, uh, what's the word, decisions to make because I am pretty excited about playing Righteous Fire in a League Start. It's been a few leagues since I've done Righteous Fire as League Start, and it's one of my favorites to do, obviously. And I'm conflicted on whether or not I want to go for an Elementalist and go for a Giga High Damage uh, Life Based RF, or if I want to go for a probably tankier, higher Energy Shield Pool Trickster and defy the fact that poor old tricksters man this is this is uh, kind of depressing to see is like you go over and of course you have tricksters all the way at 0.2 percent and you go you look for righteous fire and then you look for trickster and there's two guys there's two guys played righteous fire trickster it's just depressing maybe we could bump those numbers up if we go for something like that or bump the numbers up for people playing righteous fire elementalists moral of the story these are the two builds i'm kind of considering starting and i kind of want to get your guys' opinion on hey would you be more excited for me doing righteous fire elementalist or would you be more excited for me doing righteous fire trickster and maybe give your input on the two builds because i'm trying to work through which one i would rather do and at which point i'll end up basically fine-tuning my plan for the character in the current coming league along with progression my leveling strategy for the character all that sort of stuff i'm just coping i'm <laughs> I'm curious slash open for what you guys have to th what you guys have to say about such a build. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, Exiles. Take care.